Hey, good morning, Project Church. We are so glad that you are joining us for Online Church. Man, some of y'all are watching online, uh, but we have a, quite a few people coming um, just to the limit that we're allowed to have here. So it's a full house, but it's also um, full online, hopefully. So I'm Chrissy yeah. Cole, one of the lead pastors here. And I'm Sam, and I'm the youth pastor here. And I'm Laura, I'm the intern here. Yeah, yeah, give it up for Laura. Woo-hoo. Intern, intern live. That means that she does. Can you buff my shoes later? Just kidding. That's not the <laughs> culture here. That's hey, not the culture here. talking about buffing. My calling. <laughs> talking about servanthood and buffing shoes. Did you guys notice how wonderful the weather is outside right now? It is so <laughs> Great transition. That was a Good. great transition. <laughs> no, all. seriously, it's... I woke up this morning and it smelled like basketball season do you know what I'm saying because like the fall yeah. like that's when you start preseason yeah, ba- sure. and it just feels like fall and the, my kids this weekend they wanted to rake leaves and jump wow, in them your, your yeah kids wanted to do that they did not doing something right not to clean to play oh so I do that. yeah but I I love fall and so that's you know great. what that makes me think of it makes me think and I'm sure for you guys too Apple Hill oh oh for yeah. sure have you been to Apple Hill yet to not go to Apple Hill is to not fully experience the fall season. This is true. Especially in Northern Cal. This is true. <laughs> <laughs> Apple Hill, I'm there every other week. Yeah. I like to drive around. If, if nothing else, just to drive just around. Just to drive. And to get that fresh, crisp air, mm-hmm. the smell of apples. Yeah. Uh, maybe get some apple cider or yes. donut. Uh, I don't know who loves it more, me or my wife, and I'm not proud of that. But <laughs> we both love it. We're up there every week, every so other fun. week. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't been yet. Got to get yeah. them. Okay, yeah, you got to get them. And the Christmas trees are almost ready to be chopped? Oh, yes. Mm, that yes. smell, the Christmas tree smell. Okay, so for fall, when you looked out today, when you saw how the weather was looking, what can you say is your favorite fall attire? Like instantly, you know, you're mm-hmm. ready to wear mm-hmm. them. My Zara cable knit cream extra <laughs> long label. sweater. It's, it's so cozy I can't wait to see and warm. I mm. um, can't wear black pants with it because the fuzz comes off on it. So um, uh, way too many so, details. So but many yes, details. I woke up this morning just saying I want to be cozy and warm. Mm. I'm not wearing it, but mm. that's what I wanted to put okay. on. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice. What about you, Sam? <sighs> oh, man, so many <laughs> outfits come to mind, <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, I would say to not be generic. <laughs> Honestly, I just appreciate uh, a, a nice Carhartt beanie. Okay. Okay. And, Carhartt beanie. Got it. You know, Check. I don't, you know, I think the one that just keeps coming to my mind is the, <laughs> is the red flannel. 
A red flannel. With, uh, Prestige. Some, some, with some black jeans, okay. high skinny cut up jeans. Okay, I feel and like you're not done yet. Keep and going. And then maybe some like brown Chelsea boots. Okay. Got a few of those just he waiting for fall. He didn't think about this, pre-think about this or anything. Not at all. Right. Yeah, just, just what comes to mind. Just been Instantly. dreaming about it perhaps? Yeah, I'm actually upset I'm not wearing Chelsea boots right now. I got yeah. here, I'm like, what am I thinking? Yeah, but sure. I had to wait, I had to hit, wait for the moist air to hit my face. Mm. Once that happened, I'm like, where are my Chelsea boots? Unbelievable. Anyway, okay. I got one more Laura, question. Laura, you tell me. Don't oh, yes. tell me what you wear. Okay, so for me, it would have to be turtlenecks and a good trench coat. Like, yes, it's just the trim. easy, good to go, ready to get the day started. Like, for me, the coats, the bigger the coat, the better. The more layers, the better. Oh, That's I love that. Me. Christmas you, present. Were you kind of transitioning because the message today is about dreaming and coats? Ooh, See what yeah. I did there? Yeah, All right, quick job. question, speed round. Last one right here. Uh, fall season, great season. Winter also great. Fall is better, I think. Yes. Um, unless there's snow involved, the winter's better. But <laughs> Christmas, Thanksgiving. If you could skip over Thanksgiving and just celebrate Christmas the whole time, mm. do you do it? I love fall too much. I can't. I can't. No? No. So you got to no. have the... Got to have it. Thanksgiving's it. like a speed bump, right? Yeah. It's like, yes. You're ready for Christmas. I'm already listening to music now, yes. Christmas music. Yes. And then all of a sudden, it's like Thanksgiving comes, you're like, man, I'm so thankful. And then you're back to Christmas, right? Yes. yes. But, you know, I think it's the best way. And this, there's no better way to segue into <laughs> worship than this. Be thankful. You know, on, Thanksgiving happens for Christmas. And we celebrate Christmas because Jesus is the reason for the Here season. Here we go. Come but on. sometimes we cannot... <laughs> actually celebrate the reason mm -hmm. without gratitude first. So Thanksgiving sure. has to happen first. Yeah, Thanksgiving sure. our hearts. So that was my segue. We are about <laughs> to go into a time of worship and this is our opportunity to praise the one who deserves it. The reason why we're here, the reason we exist, the reason yeah. why we do Project Church is because of Jesus. So we're going to praise him and praise precedes the breakthrough. So I know some of you have some breakthrough that you're ready to receive in your life. So Let's just praise God together and get excited for what he's going to do and how he's going to break through. Amen? Amen. Cool. Let's go. Let's go.
Good morning, Project Church. We're so glad you guys are here today at the 11 o'clock service. If you guys want to go ahead and stand up, we're going to get some worship going here. Come on. Get those hands together, guys. Come on. Come on, here we go. worship you in this place. Let's just lift our hands and God, we welcome your presence. God, we just want to worship you and lift your name in this room. You know the needs, you know our hearts, God, so we welcome you. No point. 
chain of reference you spoke to the dark and fleshed out the wonder of the light and as you speak a hundred billion galaxies are born in the vapor of your breath The stars are made to worship, so alive. Every burning star signifies a grace. If creation sings your praises, so alive. Yeah.
beginning I can't control what tomorrow will bring But I know here in the middle Yes, Jesus Is the place where you promise to be Unless you come, will you meet me here again? Cause all I want is all you are. Will you meet me here again? Oh, would you meet us here? declare it this morning as I walk now through the valley let your love let your love rise above every fear like the sun shape in the shadows in my weakness oh, in my weakness your glory Oh, I want. 
give a shout of praise in this place. He's a good God. He's a great God. And you know, as we are singing these songs, Psalms 27, 13 through 14 was spoken this morning when all the volunteers were meeting. And it said this, and it says this, I remain confident of this. I will see, I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Are you alive in this place? Are you live where you are online? You will see the goodness of God. You will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. It says this though, wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Our commands from that scripture is to wait on God. It's reminding us that we're not enough unless he comes. It's reminding us that if we don't worship, the rocks will cry out, all of creation will praise him. So why not while we're waiting, we praise him and we trust him for breakthrough. So right now I want you to just lift up your hands in your, this place, lift up your hearts, open your hearts and your minds to him. He wants to deposit something in our hearts and our minds. He wants us to receive while we're waiting, wherever you are online. You just receive from God. If you have to lift your hands, if you have to close your eyes and lift up your head, lift up your heart and say, I'm taking heart, God, and I'm ready to receive. I don't have to achieve. I'm ready to receive. I don't have to do this, that, and the other. I have to receive. So God right now is telling you that he's going to remind you of his goodness. He's going to remind you that he's faithful. He's reminding you as you're lifting your hands, as you're opening your heart, let him remind you. Let him fill you with his faithfulness he's a faithful god he's gonna provide he's gonna pr be the provision that you're waiting for he's gonna be the job he's gonna be the relationship but don't worry about those things just worry about him just worry about him receive from him today god i pray that you would bless your people download into them new dreams new thoughts more courage more faith and fill them to overflowing god so that you will prove to them that even in the waiting, you make things happen. Even in the waiting, breakthrough is on its way. So we speak breakthrough over these people as they receive from only what you can give them and only what you can do in your precious and holy name. Amen, amen. Come on. Are you ready for that breakthrough, church? Let's trust him more and the breakthrough will come. Well, hey, we're so glad that you're here, that you're joining us here in the building. If you're one of the few who were able to sign up and be a part of it, it's nice to have a room, but it's also nice to have you online. So glad that you're joining us. Thanks for tuning in. We know that you're gonna be blessed. It's a mighty, powerful message that I got to hear first service, and I know Caleb's gonna bring it next. But first, can I just say thank you? Thank you for being a part of this church body. Thank you for continually sacrificing your time, your money, your energy. And I wanna encourage you, continue to be generous with your time. We have an opportunity to be generous in the coming weeks for a hope day. You're gonna hear more about that, but we have an opportunity to bring hope in our giving, in our generosity. So continue to be faithful and see that God will do even above and it, he will exceed all of our expectations. That's the kind of God that we serve. So I wanna say thank you and I wanna bless you for giving today make sure that you um, go to projectchurch.com slash give or give to the church center app and i trust that god will give you breakthrough in that provision as well so love you guys and we're going to go to a time of announcements so be right back oh hey actually why don't you greet one another in the room i forgot there's people i'm addressing not just online why don't you turn to maybe two or three people air five air hug and here, online, I'm air hugging you. All right, it's so good to see people. Man, I'm seeing people I haven't seen since March, and y'all look good. Y'all look really good today. That mask is looking really good on you. Just brings out your eyes. So here's the deal, guys, we have, we're so excited here to, to have you here, to host you here. We're about to jump into a message that is straight fire. God's opening up a lot of things here. But uh, my name is Lauren, this is Sam, and we got some announcements for you yes. real quick. Hey, who's the, did anybody listen last week real quick to the message, it's time to dream again? If you didn't, go back and listen to it, but today's going to be good. 
And uh, hey, we're seeing a lot of new faces, and maybe you're not new, and you've been coming for a while, and I haven't seen you for six months, and we get to meet again. But if this is your first time, we want to encourage you to fill out like a virtual connect card. If you just pull out your phone and you text new to church, one word, no spaces, we don't do that. New to church to 97,000. Uh, we got a gift for you coming today. We'd love to get you to be a part of the family and plugged in. And uh, after you do that, after service, walk out those back doors, turn to the left. That is my left. Turn to the left. And there's going to be a box of and goodies for you coming today. We want to just welcome you to the family here at Project. Let's give it up for our VIPs, first time guests. Woo! Come on, you're the real deal. You could have gone anywhere. You could have done anything with your Sunday. So glad you're here. All right, so check this out. Chrissy mentioned this. Uh, generosity is our privilege. That's something we say. Jesus said it's more of a blessing to give than it is to receive. It kind of doesn't make sense. But when it happens, it makes sense. You all know when you've given someone a gift right. and you're more excited about them opening it than yeah. they are. That's because that experience of generosity is a privilege to give. And we have a huge opportunity just to give of our time and to serve our community. Uh, this Saturday, it's called Hope Day. And uh, you could go on our website to register, projectchurch.com slash hope. And we are releasing hope. And we're actually just cleaning up the riverfront. We're cleaning up the riverfront and just coming and saying, how can we serve our community? We're here in Old Sacramento. We're starting off by serving our community. So check it out and come out this Saturday, 9 to noon. We're just coming out and serving. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. We want to encourage you to get here a little early, around 845. We had a lot going on that day, a lot of projects. And like he mentioned, I mean, we got a high school leadership team coming out. We got young adults. We got young and old. Uh, so get here at 845. We want to get you guys set up, and we want to pray before we go out there. Uh, but hey, last thing for me, uh, this Wednesday, as you guys know, every other week we've been doing a prayer and worship night. And we're going to continue that this Wednesday at 7 p.m. So everybody in here, we got you on registrations. We want to see you back on Wednesday night. So come in, have some community. There's nothing better than really, I mean, we didn't get to do this for seven months. And so I'm going to be here every opportunity I can. So get your friends, get your family in here. Such an easy invite. Wednesday at 7 p.m. right here. Yeah. And lastly, we want to encourage you to connect a little deeper into community. So we have groups that are happening online and a few in person. So uh, if you are curious, even just a little bit of like, maybe I want to check out what it means to connect to a community group. Just text what's on the screen. Project groups to 97,000, all one word, 97000. And uh, you'll get connected on, with, on how, to, how, how to connect with a community group. They're so life-giving. We were just hearing a story about someone's Friday night group and how, it, how they, they ended up staying till like midnight. And they were just praying and, and God was moving in their life. And that's what we celebrate here. But also, including with groups, we have these amazing, amazing things called teams. And it's the best yes. opportunity to serve. So you probably saw some people with these cool vests and these, these uh, earpieces in walkie-talkies that are communicating with each other. People in production people in our kids team, people at the front like scanning your forehead as you walk in. That's because these all, all these people, we're not paying them. I don't know if you knew that. They are all volunteering their time because they believe generosity is our privilege and team is our strength. So if you want to help this team, if you want to say, man, I, I could give one Sunday a month, two Sundays a month to serve and make a difference, simply go to projectchurch.com slash teams and find a team that's right for you. We have a spot for you that you can serve. All right, we're about to get hype. Anybody excited to be back in church? All right, I feel like we can do better than that. Is anybody excited to be back in church? So this is what we're going to do. We got a bumper video, and as soon as that rolls, I think we've got some of the most amazing lead pastors in Pastor Caleb and Chrissy. Don't clap for them yet. When the bumper video finishes and Caleb comes on, let's do better than the 9 a.m. Let's stand up. Let's give them some, some praise. Thank them for what they're doing. So let's get crazy. So right after the bumper video, stand on your feet. Let's get loud. We dream of a church that looks like heaven, all races, ages, backgrounds, and demographics. We dream of a church that serves the homeless and the poor. We dream of a church that plants churches all around the Sacramento area. We dream of a church that carries honor. We dream of a church of creativity and the arts. We dream of a church that is spirit-filled and spirit-empowered. We dream of a church of worshipers. We dream of a church of prayer warriors. We dream of a church that sends people to take the gospel to the ends of the earth. We dream of a church committed to bringing heaven to earth that declares in Sacramento as it is in heaven. We dream of a church that transforms the landscape of a city, carrying a biblical worldview wherever it goes. 
We dream of a church that loves no strings attached. We dream of a church where all are welcome and it's okay to be a work in progress. We dream of a church that declares that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and the only way to the Father. We dream of a church that leads all people to find life and freedom in Jesus. Now is the time to dream. Good morning, everybody. Oh, okay. Okay. They must have told you to do that. I didn't hear that. Man, thank you guys for being here. Good to see you all in the room. Everybody online, what up? Um, we're missing you. We can't wait for us all to be together in person again. Obviously, right now, um, we have room restrictions in terms of numbers. So good job registering. Make sure you do it again for this next week. Um, we're loving being able, to, being able to have church in person again. How many of you missed it? Uh, I know I missed it. I missed you. Seeing your faces has truly brought joy to mine and Chrissy's heart and our whole team. And uh, man, we're just loving what God's doing in our church. If you have your Bibles, I'm going to be coming from Genesis chapter 37 today. You can go there. Uh, we are continuing this series. Last week, we kicked it off talking about how it's time to dream again. And we're talking about dreamers. We're talking about being dreamers in this series. I believe in a season of discouragement, when there's a lot to be discouraged about, there's a lot that could discourage us, and I'll admit that I have been discouraged, that God is releasing and calling the church to be dreamers, that we would believe that the best is yet to come, that we would believe that God is still doing something in our city, in our state, and in our nation. And so I wanted to challenge you, and last week we challenged you, that you would leave this place hope-filled, encouraged and dreaming for a better future. God doesn't want us discouraged. How many want to be discouraged? I don't want to be discouraged. God doesn't want you discouraged. He wants us encouraged. And I believe when the church dreams, then we bring something and release something in the atmosphere that changes wherever we go. And so God is looking for some dreamers. And I look out here and I see dreamers in the house. I see dreamers in the room. I know some of you all online, you are dreamers. And so I was thinking about like my dream as a kid, and man, I, I remember thinking back, even as a college-age student, young adult, I started dreaming about having a family. And uh, you know, God blessed me with my wife. I dreamed about having children, and God has blessed me with three children, three amazing children. But one thing about children is those of you that are parents in this room, you recognize that often it feels anything but like a dream, all right? Sometimes you go, today is a nightmare, you know what I'm saying? Um, but what I love about my kids is that my kids don't remember what an amazing dad I am. Like, I thought my kids are going to think I'm the greatest, I'm the cool dad, I'm the fun dad, and that's all they're going to ever remember. My kids, all they ever bring up are not the great things I did for them, or all the ways I've blessed them, or all the fun I've been for them. They only remember the times that I failed, okay? Okay. So pretty much every week, they remind me and Chrissy about that time that we were arguing, and I got so mad, and they were in the room, that I yelled, shut up, at my wife, and then threw a water bottle across the room and broke one of our blinds. Does anybody feel me? I'm human, like y'all. And, and it's the only thing my kids remember. They remind me every single week. I'm like, I messed up one time. I've pretty much been perfect other than that. I messed up, I'm lying, I messed up one time, and it's all you guys can remember. But how many of you know the dream often looks different than the reality? And so what I want to talk to you about today is dreams. And uh, I want to talk to you about Joseph. So most of you have heard the story of Joseph, whether you grew up in the church or not. There's actually a Broadway musical, right? Joseph and the Technicolor Dreamcoat. I mean, most of us have heard at least a bit of the story of Joseph. And so we're going to take a little glimpse into that today. Let's look. Genesis chapter 37, verse number five says this. Now Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him even more. When Joseph was 17, he had a dream, and his brothers hated him, it says, all the more, meaning they already hated him. But once he told them about his dream, they hated him even more. Now, 
How many know there's such a thing as talking too much? Where are my over-talkers in the room? Come on, you know who you are. You're raising your hand. Be proud of it. You're proud of it. Joseph here as a young adolescent, um, probably not the wisest at the time or the smartest, he talks a little too much. He starts telling his brothers who already don't like him about his dream. And he says, here's what's going to happen. All right, here's what I had. I had a dream. And in my dream, um, all of you were bundles of wheat. And I was a bundle of wheat. And I was in the middle. And all of your bundles bowed down to my bundle. Isn't that an awesome dream? And they're like, no, that's not awesome. And then he's like, oh, and I had another dream. And we were all stars. And I was in the middle. And, and you all bowed down to me, to my star. Isn't that awesome? And they're like, no, that's not awesome. How many know there are times that we need to keep our dreams to ourselves? There are times that we need to hold in our heart what God has placed in our heart because as the Bible says, also don't cast your pearls to the swine. That's what the book of Proverbs says. Sometimes you need to hold those pearls in because the swine can't accept it. They can't receive it. He was the favorite child. Joseph was the favorite child. He was treated different because he was his father's favorite because he was his father's wife's son or favorite wife's son. You see, his father in this day, they practiced polygamy, had multiple wives, but he had a favorite wife, Rachel. And Rachel gave birth to Joseph. Finally, after years of her not being able to give birth. And so he immediately becomes his father's favorite. And what does his father do? The sons already know he's the favorite. They already know that his father favors that wife. And then his father gives him a coat of many colors. And what does Joseph do? He wears that coat. He wore that coat boldly. He wasn't afraid to look different. And how many of you know he was clothed in the fabric of the favor of his father? And I want to tell you today that if you are a follower of Christ, you are clothed in the fabric of the favor of the heavenly father. You are walking in that. And so you have a coat that no one can take away. And I want to encourage you that you would walk in that fabric. You would walk in that favor. You are clothed as sons and daughters of God. And we need to boldly walk with that. Because you know what a dream does? A dream will make you bold. And that's what Joseph does. He has a dream. He has a coat. And he wears it with boldness. And so today I want to continue this dreamer series. And I actually originally titled this message, The Courage of a Coat. I got some coats up here for you today. We're going to get to them in a moment. But then I changed it, and so the title of my message, I got two titles, but the real title is Dimensions of a Dream. How many know that dreams take on different dimensions, especially in different seasons? And so I believe this word is going to encourage you, build you up. So my challenge to you is that you would right now say, God, show me what you want me to see. I'm here and I'm open to receive because maybe you came in here, you're a little adverse, maybe somebody invited you, maybe you're not sure about what's going on here, you don't know about me, you don't know about what's, what this whole place is about, you don't know about this God thing. I want to just challenge you right now that you would say, you know what, whatever you want me to receive, God, let me receive it. So I want to talk to you about the dimensions of a dream. Dreams take on different dimensions. The first dimension of a dream is that dreams make you different. Everybody say different. Joseph didn't follow his dreams. And so in this moment, a lot of people are like, follow your dreams. Go after your dreams. I'm going to give you some different advice. Joseph did not follow his dreams. His dreams followed him. Here's what I want to tell you. I don't follow a dream. I follow Jesus. And when I follow Jesus, then I know that my dreams will follow me. The true dreams from God will follow me. Some of us are standing in the middle of our dreams, but we can't see it. We don't see it when we're in the middle of it because it looks different than we thought it was going to look. Some of you are in your dream and you're going, God, this wasn't what I had planned. This wasn't my idea. This is, wasn't what I thought this dream was going to look like. Why? Because you don't recognize that God actually has you right where he wants you. Dreams make you different, but they also take on different dimensions. So I was looking here at Genesis chapter 37, 
And I want to ask you, as dreams make you different, I want to ask you a question. Are you courageous enough to wear your coat? My wife just bought me this coat, so I wore it today. How are you enjoying this fall weather? Oh, my goodness. It was like foggy out this morning. Felt like we were living in the Bay Area. Come on. Joseph, I had to modernize this for us all, right? Joseph puts on the coat of many colors. I got my Jordan coat today. Joseph puts on the coat of many colors. Why? Because this was the coat of the favor of his father. And he wears it with boldness. He knows that he looks different. And the dream and the, the favor of his father makes him look different. But he walks in that difference. Don't be different just to be different, church. Because I think a lot of people in this culture are like, I just want to be different. And our only reason to be different is to be different. Don't be different to be different. Be different because your values, because the biblical worldview that you carry is different. That's a different that people can get behind. Be different because your dreams have given you a different perspective. That's something that people will support and get behind. I also want to tell you, don't dumb down your different. Because sometimes we dumb down our difference so we can conform to what culture says we should be or what we should look like. Joseph didn't have to wear his coat. I mean, y'all are going to see me in the streets rocking this. And you'll be like, okay, Caleb, that's different. Joseph didn't have to wear his coat around his brothers. He knew they already hated him. But he said, this is the favor of my father. This is what I'm clothed in. And I, I'm going to wear it boldly. Don't dumb down your different church. I think in this moment as Christians, we're dumbing down our, our, our heart for Christ. We want to make it seem calm or we don't want people to think we're weird. I remember back in the day they used to call them Jesus freaks. And, and, and we don't want people to perceive us as a Jesus freak. We, like, I want to be that cool Christian. Listen to me. You want to know what the coolest thing is? The coolest thing is being kind, loving, gentle, all the fruits of the Spirit. That's the coolest thing you can do. So when you're clothed in the fruits of the Spirit, when you're clothed in the coat of a follower of Christ, you look different. Not because you force it, but because that's what happens when you walk with a biblical worldview in this world. Even Joseph's decision to speak about his dream prematurely was part of the story. You see, God used this to position Joseph perfectly. He used this to fulfill his dream. And so I just want to tell you, sometimes we, we are young and dumb. Sometimes we can act immaturely or get caught up in our flesh. And I want to tell you, maybe you thought I ruined my dream. I want to tell you, if you keep your eyes on Jesus, even when you act out, even when you mess up, even when you stumble along the way, God's going to use even your failures to position you perfectly for the dream that he has for your life. So don't look back and say, I messed up and I blew it. No, God's saying, I'm going to use your mess ups because what, what man often intends for evil, God can take it and use it for good. So trust him even in your failures. Joseph, he probably should have kept that dream to himself, but he speaks it out, and it leads him, and he ends up in a pit. But I wanted to say that, like, we need to pursue in this moment not being normal. I believe normal's overrated. Come on. Normal's overrated. I think we need some different people in this world right now. I think we see, I see a lot of people trying to conform A lot of Christians trying to conform. And and I think different is overrated. We need some different people in this room right now, online right now. So right now, I need everyone to say this. Say, I'm different. I was in, uh, I grew up here in Sacramento. I actually grew up off of Calvine Road, Vintage Park. Come on, somebody. And uh, in, in the Sacramento area. Grew up here. But then I went to college in Missouri. And so I got to Missouri. And let me tell you, when you're a Cali boy, uh, going to Missouri, like, you're immediately different. I get to college, and not only that, but it's a very conservative Christian college, and I grew up in a Christian home, but my parents were a little more, like, free with me. They were down. I was listening to them growing up. I was, you know, grew up listening to some 112. Come on, somebody. Cupid, he don't lie. Um, I grew up I grew up listening to some Black Street, no diggity. I grew up listening to, I mean, I loved r and I, I, I grew up listening to some NSYNC. Come on. And, uh, I grew up and I get to Bible college and I'm rocking all these jams 
in, in my dorm room. And I had so many people in the college, other students come to me and be like, yo, bro, you can't listen to this and love Jesus. And I had to rebuke that in Jesus' name. <laughs> you see, I was fine with my different. I embraced my different. I, I, I mean, I'm like, look, we're in Missouri, but I can't stop being who I am. And so I want to tell you, dreams make you different. And we need different people. But you're not different because you look like the world. You're different because you're clothed in the favor of your father. Joseph was clothed in the favor of his father, and it made him different from his brothers. It set him apart. Second dimension of a dream, dreams make you different. But second, dreams follow you. I said it earlier. Joseph didn't follow his dreams. His dreams followed him. I don't follow a dream. I follow Jesus. And so here's what happens. Joseph, after telling his brothers about his dream, they get upset. They hate him all the more, it says. And so they take him and they strip him of his coat. They throw him into a pit and they're actually about to kill him. When one of the brothers says, why would we kill him? Reuben says this, when we could actually make money off him. Here comes these Ishmaelite traders. Let's sell him to them and we can get rich. And then we'll take his coat and we'll tell our father that he's dead. And so they take his coat. They rip it apart. They put fake or blood, animal blood on it. And they say, your son Joseph has been devoured. And they sell him off into slavery. Some of us are standing in the middle of dreams that look different. So Joseph goes from clothed in the favor of his father to now a servant. So I had to get a flannel. Some of you wearing flannel today. Good job. This is workman's wear. Although this is the challenge of being 6'3 with long arms right here. This is, an, this is an extra large. You see, the picture rarely shows the process. And what I found is online, a lot of us are trying to put pictures to make it look like we've arrived. I've, people have told me, they've come to me like, I just hope one day I can have a marriage like yours. And they see the picture. I posted a picture last week of me and my wife at a wedding. We were looking good, y'all. I said, I've been slaying weddings for 12 years with this girl. 12 years of, we just had our 12-year anniversary. But let me tell you, when all you see is the picture, you don't know anything about the process. You don't know about the pain we've walked through together. You don't know about the frustration we've had together. You don't know about the late nights working out our issues we've walked through together. You don't know about all that we've done to build the picture. And what we do, and what I think a lot of us have done, is we want to paint a picture that looks good to everyone else. And then as a result, we start comparing our picture to other people's picture. But people, you don't see the behind the scenes of the picture. And what I found, and what I'm guilty of, is that if it's truly from God... I know that my dream will follow me. Joseph is doing his thing. He's now in Potiphar's house. So if you know anything about the story, he gets sold to the Ishmaelites. The Ishmaelites then sell him to Potiphar. Potiphar is in, in the army. Um, he's a high-ranking official officer in Pharaoh's army. And so he puts Joseph in charge of his house. And Joseph, because his eyes are still fixed on God, in the process... Joseph keeps honoring God and everything he touches goes well. Everything he touches, there's favor upon. So before you know it, Potiphar's house is being blessed. Potiphar's house is profiting and Joseph is the, is the right-hand man. Joseph is in charge of everything that Potiphar owns. But how many of you know that when dreams follow you, also temptation will follow you? You see, sometimes we think, oh, if I follow my dream, it'll be easy. Oh, if I pursue what God's put in my heart, 
I won't ever have any challenges or any problems. But how many of you know there are always temptations along the journey? So I want to read Genesis chapter 39, verse 7 through 13. Here's what it says. And after a time, his master's wife cast her eyes on Joseph and said, lie with me. Everybody say, "Uh uh-uh. But he refused, said to his master's wife, behold, because of me, my master has no concern about anything in the house, and he has put everything that he has in my charge. He is not greater in this house than I am, nor has he kept back anything from me except you, because you are his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Do you see this? And as he spoke to Joseph, she spoke to Joseph day after day. He would not listen to her, to lie beside her, or to be with her. I think this is significant because I think some of you are going through life right now and you're pers- you've been pursuing your dreams. And in the process of pursuing your dreams, some temptation has come along. And when temptation comes, we have a choice to cave to the temptation or to stand firm with our eyes on God. You see, Joseph could have been mad at God. He went from the favor of his father, the most esteemed, the highest, to a pit, to now a servant in, his, in, a, in a master's house. He's just a worker. He could have been bitter. He could have been angry. He could have said, this isn't the dream. Like, what about the dream? What about them all bowing down to me? He could have been frustrated, but no, he fixed his eyes on God and he said, how could I do this wickedness, this evil and sin, not just against her or his father or himself, but against God. You see, when we keep our eyes on Jesus, our dreams follow us. When we keep our eyes on God, our dreams follow us. And the enemy wants to do nothing more than distract you and deter you from the dreams that God has put in your life. And what you don't realize is you think, well, I'm in the process and it feels like I'm nowhere near my dream. I'm sure Joseph felt like he was nowhere near his dream when he's clothed in a servant's attire, in a servant's garb. And so it would have been very easy to say, forget it. God's left me. What does it matter? I'm just going to engage in momentary satisfaction, in momentary pleasure. Why? Because God's abandoned me anyways. And some of you have been there, and I want to challenge you that in this moment, in this season, in the seasons when you feel like you're not in the middle of your dream, what you don't recognize is God is doing something in you in that moment to develop you for the dream that he has for you. And so what does he do? Chrissy's going to come. It says that he tells her no. But one day she sees him and she says, lie with me, like Chrissy's always trying to get me to, right? (laughs) Three kids, y'all. It's amazing we don't have more. Everyone's like, I feel uncomfortable. Okay. (laughs) We're married. It's natural. (laughs) So it says that she grabs him by the cloak and says, lie with me. Now, I want you to understand, like, he's favored. Like, he is having success in Potiphar's home. He's now the right-hand man. He knows if I don't give in here in this moment, like, there's going to be serious repercussions. I've already been in a pit. I've already been stripped of so much. What if they strip me of another thing that I have some success in? But he chooses God over that moment. He chooses God over that status he chooses God over that coat and it says that he runs with her the garment still in her hands and he runs for it and he leaves it why why would he leave it because he know that this was knew that this was not his identity he knew that the favor of God and being in right standing with God was more important than any current status or job, or role that he had, and he says, I'm willing to leave that. I'm willing to let go of that. You see, your dreams follow you as long as you follow Jesus, as long as you keep your eyes on Jesus. But what we try to do is we try to hold on to that which we have in the moment. He could have said, you know what, all right. I don't don't want the repercussions of saying no to this woman. But he said, no, I'm going to let that go. Why? Because what matters more is what God says about me than what man says about me. 
Which leads to the third dimension, which is dreams take developing. So what happens? He runs out the house, and most likely, you know, that they didn't wear a lot under those tunics, so he runs out naked, just running down the street like, heck no, I'm out, woman. Takes off, and she immediately says, he tried to take advantage of me. Look, I even have his cloak in my hand. And Potiphar obviously is upset, believes his wife, and Joseph is put in prison for years. So what happens? Good thing it's Halloween season. Thank you, Party City. Got that state penitentiary coat. So now he's clothed. His new coat is one of a prisoner. But you know what I, I think is so interesting? And what we have to recognize is that nothing is wasted with God. No season is wasted with God. When we keep our eyes on God, when we follow Jesus, I said it already, your dreams will follow you. It doesn't matter if you go, no, I lost so much. I've already been stripped of, of my identity. I've been stripped now of another identity, another role, another job, and now I'm nothing. I'm a prisoner. This is my new identity. Is this who I am? But I love what happens here. You see, we got to fast forward. Go to Genesis chapter 40. I want to read verse number 8. You see, what happens with dreams is dreams, if we keep our eyes on God and we follow him in the process, he'll develop us into who we need to be so we're ready for the dream to be fulfilled. And some of you out there are so wanting your dream to come to fruition, you're trying to force it into place. You're trying to force it into reality. You're trying to force it to happen. And God is saying to you, there's a reason that it's delayed. A dream delayed is a dream that I believe can be developed. And so what God is doing in the delaying season, because some of you have been, your dreams have been delayed. God is developing you so you're ready to walk into the dream as who you need to be or you wouldn't be ready for it in the first place. So what happens? Genesis chapter 40, verse number 8. I want you to see this. Joseph has been in jail. He's been imprisoned. And now a couple individuals from Pharaoh's house come. And they come and they both have dreams. And... Joseph goes and speaks to them, and I love what happens here in verse number 8. They said to him, we have had dreams, and there is no one to interpret them. And Joseph said to them, do not interpretations belong to God. Please tell them to me. Now watch this. Development in the process of our dreams changes us. It molds us into who we need to be to fulfill the dreams God has for us. It has been two decades. He has been thrown into a pit, lost his family, unappreciated, hated, now lied about, and falsely imprisoned. 17-year-old Joseph was all about sharing his dreams. Let me tell you, brothers. Let me tell you what you're going to, you're all going to bow down to me. It's going to be dope. <laughs> Like, I'm the man, and you're all bowing to me. Isn't that cool? Fast forward 20 years. Joseph's been through some things. He's had some challenges. He's developed, and I guarantee you, he's been humbled. And now, 20 years later, he's not telling people about his dreams. He's saying, please tell me about your dreams. Tell me what dreams you have. Let me help you. Let me, let me develop those with you. You see, God develops dreams in the dark. He develops your dreams as you develop your integrity. Dreams are delayed, but we have to trust God more than we trust our dreams. And some of you have been so enamored and, and focused on your dreams that you, st fo you stop focusing and trusting in the giver of dreams, in the God that develops dreams, that positions you perfectly in dreams. Not only that, but I think some of you You've been in a season of feeling like you're in prison. Maybe you're imprisoned by a job. Maybe you feel like the relationship you're in is a prison. 
You feel like the sin that's got a hold of you is a prison. I want to tell you this, that you may be there, but you don't have to stay there. I want to tell you this, that God can fix your relationship. He can heal your marriage. God can develop you, though, in that season. Like Joseph was in the prison. He could, again, curse God, be mad at God. But what happens in the prison? He honors God, blesses God. And now, again, in the prison, the, the warden puts him in charge of everybody. Why? Because when you honor God, focus on God, you, you, you fixate your eyes on God, there will be favor in every season. There's favor in the prison season, just as there's favor in, in, the, in the season of being the father's favorite. You see, dreams take developing. God wants to develop you. And so I'm telling you that some of you feel like you're in a season of prison, and God is saying to you today, I'm developing you, I'm molding you, I'm making you into who you need to be for the future and the dream to be fulfilled, which leads to the last point. The last dimension of a dream is dreams become about serving. You see, he's a prisoner. But after he interprets the one, the baker and the cupbearer's dream, one of them dies and one of them gets elevated back to the Pharaoh's house. And the Pharaoh has a dream. And as the Pharaoh has a dream... He's trying to get people to interpret his dream and no one can figure it out. He's got all the religious guys, all the cult leaders of his day. They're trying to, to interpret it for him and no one can interpret it. And then the one individual who Joseph had interpreted says, oh, I actually know a guy. He's a prisoner. He says, I know a guy. We should bring him in. He might be able to interpret your dream. And so he goes. And he takes off the coat of a prisoner. Finally, takes off the coat of a prisoner. And now it says that they shave him, they clean him up, and they dress him in Egyptian clothes, which I thought velvet would be perfect to illustrate Egyptians today. And he puts on the coat of an Egyptian. So I wanted to ask you today, what if your dream was just the first draft? What if your dream was just draft one and maybe, just maybe, you needed to be open to a revision? God wanted to revise the dream that you had in your heart. You see, his dream realized comes when his brothers show up. So we fast forward 20 years. 20 years later, what happens? He's now elevated. After he interprets Pharaoh's dreams, Joe, uh, Pharaoh is so impressed, and he's like, well, that's amazing. Thank you for telling me what that means, but what would you do? What would you do with that dream? And Joseph says, here's what I would do. And he gives him a plan. And the Pharaoh is so impressed with the plan. He says, you know what? I'm going to have you execute that plan. In fact, I'm going to make you, I'm going to put you in command of all of Egypt. You're second only to me. We so often attach ourselves to a version of a dream that may not have come from God in the first place. Maybe, just maybe, your dream was given to you, not for your status, but for you to be about service. What did Jesus say? He said, the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. So as those of us that follow Christ, the final dimension of a dream is your dreams are not about your status. Your dreams are about you serving. Because I want to show you his dreams are realized finally in the form of his brothers begging him for food. You see, there's a famine in the land and Joseph's been storing up the food because he knew it was coming. God gave him the interpretation. 
And now his brothers show up. His brothers show up and they walk in and they see this man and, and he's, they know he's like the right hand man to Pharaoh and he's got all this grain and food. And they come to him and they bow down before him. And in this moment, as they bow down before him, Joseph remembers his dreams. He says, here it is. They're bowing around me. All my brothers, they're bowing around me. But I think that as a young man, he saw his dream as a status thing. That I'm going to be the man. I'm going to be elevated. My brothers are all below my feet. I'm the top dog. I'm, I'm the one. But now, after years of development, after years of humility, after years of growth, after years of trusting God through a pit, through a prison, now when his brothers kneel around him, he says it's not about status, it's about serving. I'm here on position, not so that I can be above them, but so I can serve them, so I can save them, so I can bless them. That is what your dream is for. And we've made it about our status. That in man's eyes, we look great. And God's saying, no, your dreams are meant for you to serve. So my challenge to you is that dead dreams would not discourage you, but they would delight you. Because a dead dream is just the beginning of another dream. Often one dream has to die for another, maybe even greater dream to be birthed. Or maybe you think your dream has died and God's saying, no, I just made a revision. You thought it was about your status. Joseph went all these years and he probably was thinking, man, I guess that dream wasn't meant to come to pass. But, but God had made a revision and he realized it wasn't ever about my status. It was always about my serving. And here are his brothers. I'm guessing he remembers now being clothed in the coat of an Egyptian with his brothers bowed around him and he finally peels off the coat. You see, they don't recognize him. They literally come and see him. Multiple times he puts them through all kinds of tests, which I respect that about Joseph. I was like, yeah, check him, bro. You just got to see if they've developed in the journey too. And they have. They've matured. They've grown. And so he finally, he peels off his Egyptian coat. And he puts on his father's coat again. And he says, look, guys, it's me. He says, it's me. Your brother, Joseph, and they're terrified. Of course they're terrified. They sold him into slavery. They, they sent him to a life of struggle and destruction and pain. And they're terrified. And what does he say to them? He says, do not fear. You have nothing to worry about. What you may have intended for evil, God has turned and used it for good that I would save my family that I would rescue those around me so I want to challenge you today because some of you are holding on to bitterness of the past maybe people that have betrayed you stabbed you in the back hurt you you're bitter maybe at God because the journey hasn't looked like the dream that you thought it would but I want to say to you today listen to me let go of it let go of it because God is going to turn whatever you walk through into good if you trust him if you keep your eyes fixed on him. You see, Joseph, all that time, he maybe didn't have the coat on his body, but he had it in his heart. And so I want to let you know, you maybe in this moment don't feel like you're clothed in the dream that you were meant to have, but as a follower of Christ, you are always clothed in the fabric of the Father of the Most High. You're always clothed in the favor of the Father that you have over your life. So don't despise and discourage the season that you might be in. And at the end of the day, the greatest dimension of your dreams is understanding the dimension of trust. I want to finish with this. You see, we've all been through different stages or seasons. Some of you have had the seasons of great favor on your life. Some of you have had the seasons of 
Egypt. Maybe the season of feeling imprisoned. The season of service. We walk through different seasons. But my challenge to you is that you would understand that no matter what season, that you would take your dream every season and you would trust God, that you would lay the coats at the feet of Jesus and say, I lay all my dreams, all my plans, all my ideas, and I put them at your feet because I know that your plans are greater than my, your, than my plans. Your idea, your purpose is greater than my purpose. I'm going to trust you. So I want to challenge you today as we go that whatever dream you have, whatever season you're in, whatever pain you've walked through, that you would take it and you would lay it at the feet of Jesus and say, I trust you. I trust you even though I'm in a season it feels like of prison. I trust you even though I'm in a season of servanthood. I trust you even though I'm in a land that's not my own. I trust you even though I don't feel the favor of the Father upon me. I trust you because I know you're doing something in every season, in every coat. You're working and I'm going to trust your dreams over mine. We keep our eyes on Jesus. Not on our dreams. So I want to challenge us, church, today. God's got something greater for you. I want to call out the dreamers in this room that you would dream again, you'd believe again, you'd hope again, you'd trust again. But it comes down to trust in Him and His plan over us and ours. Would you bow your heads with me across this place? If you're here and you've never surrendered your heart or your life to Jesus Christ, I believe today's your day. Maybe you've been running from God. Maybe you've turned your back on God. Maybe you've had a, a season where you were close to God, but right now you don't feel close to Him at all. You feel like you've, you've turned your back. You've been bitter. You've been hurt. You've been frustrated. Maybe you've never said, Jesus, be the Lord of my life. Today in this room and online, I want to invite you to respond to salvation. That you would say, I receive the sacrifice of the Savior Jesus upon my life. So if that's you, you need Jesus for the first time, you need to recommit yourself. In the room, on the count of three, I want you to lift your hand. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Online, I want you to get ready to pray this with me. Respond in your heart. If that's you, one, two, three, put your hand up. You need to respond to Jesus right now. Yes, I see those couple hands. Thank you. You can put them down. If you're online and everybody in the room, if this is something you've, a decision you've made in your heart, I want you to pray this with me. Everybody in here, repeat this after me. Say, Jesus, forgive me of my sin, my past, my mistakes. I ask you today to come into my life, to change me from the inside out. I'm nothing without you. I love you, Jesus, and I confess you as my Savior today and from this day forever. In your name. Amen. Come on, church. Let's make some noise in this place for the hands that were raised. Would you stand to your feet across this room? Let's sing this last song as a declaration to God that we're going to trust Him with our dreams, with our season. Come on, sing it to Him right now. on God, fixed on God, he's going to bring us through the journey and to the dream and to the purpose that he has intended for us. So Lord, I pray over your church right now, everybody in the room, everybody online, I pray that you would build new dreams in us, 
God, if there's dreams we need to let die, we let them die. If there's dreams you need to revise, we say, bring your revision. Bring your provision. Lord, today, on this room and on the line, I pray right now, God, that you would release something of faith. That we would trust you. We wouldn't walk in fear. We'd walk in faith. Lord, and we would believe for greater things in our lives, in our city, in our state, in our nation, and for our future. Lord, release dreams upon your people. We love you, and we pray all this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Come on, let's give God some praise in this place. He deserves it all. We love you, church. Our prayer team is making their way up. They're actually already up here. If you need prayer for anything in your life, we invite you to come forward. They'd love to pray with you, encourage you. For the rest of you, we love you online. We love you. God bless you. On your way out, hold on. We're going to go row by row from back to front um, just so we maintain social distance and all that, keep ourselves safe. But church, we love you. Let's keep dreaming and believing. God has greater things in store for us. God bless you guys. Have a great day. Wow, what an incredible message from Pastor Caleb. Um, It was really powerful. I listened to it twice. And when you enjoy it twice and get new revelation twice, um, that's powerful. And I think, you know, that's a message that we have, you know, many have heard about the scripture, heard about the story, uh, but God's word is so real and relevant and alive, and it speaks to us differently every time we hear it. So I was super encouraged by it. And really the ending of just laying down your dreams And when we lay down our dreams and lay down our identities, I think our identities are so tied in with our dreams. When we lay that down, then we take on the identity, the root identity that we should have to to do the dreams that will follow us if we serve Him and trust Him for them. So, yeah. Yeah, so good. We are so excited. We have Hope Day coming this (laughs) Saturday and October 31st. It'll be here at the building, so be here at 9 a.m. We are so excited to serve with you for one day of hope. Yes, and if you haven't been able to make it already, we've been looking really forward to everybody getting a chance to come. So registration opens Monday at 8 a.m. It did completely fill up both services this week, which you're really excited about, but we do want everyone to get a chance. So 8 a.m. tomorrow morning, go ahead and get registered so we can see you next time. Yeah, so we'll see you either online next week because online church is going to continue to happen. We feel like you've been watching online throughout COVID. You are a part of our online campus. So keep watching online. If not, register, like she said, first thing tomorrow morning, and we will see you soon. We love you guys. We miss you guys, and we will see you soon. Stay strong. See you. Bye.